Donc, euh, euh, le deuxième présentateur, c'est Sital. Euh, il est un étudiant et doctorant euh, à l'Université McGill et au Mila aussi. Euh, il est supervisé par le professeur euh, Chao Wen Chang et le professeur, dans, désolé pour la prononciation. Et, sorry for the pronunciation. Et euh, le professeur Dorina Krika. Euh, ses recherches portent sur l'apprentissage par représentation de graphes les calculs matriciels et l'apprentissage par renforcement. Le titre de son exposé aujourd'hui est uh, On addressing the limitations of graph convolution neural networks. Merci, c'est à toi. Thank you. Thank you for having me and for the nice introduction. Uh, today, I'm going to present uh, the topic on addressing the limitations of graph convolutional uh, networks. Uh, it summarizes the main uh, direction uh, of research. Uh, in recent years. Uh, so I will first intro introduce the notations uh, for graphs and uh, the two limitations of graph network. The first one is the performance degradation of deep GCNs. Another one is the performance degradation of heterophilic graphs. So uh, graph representation learning uh, is uh, very popular in recent years. Um, it is applied in many uh, real-world tasks, for example, node classification on citation networks and social networks, um, the prediction on dynamic graphs, for example, on transportation networks, or uh, the graph classification and generation tasks for the molecule graphs. Um, a graph structure is usually represented by the agency matrix A, uh, which is an N by N matrix. N is the number of nodes in a graph, and AIJ equals one uh, when node IJ are connected and AIJ equals to zero uh, if they are not connected. Um, based on A, you can, we, can, <clears throat> we can add a self loop and get two kinds of uh, renormalized affinity matrix, uh, which, uh, which is symmetric renormalized affinity matrix and the random walk uh, renormalized affinity matrix. Uh, we also have a feature matrix X uh, where F is the, a dimension of features uh, for each node, for each node, and a label matrix Z, uh, which is n by C matrix, and C is the number of classes. And the graph convolutional neural network um, has become one of the most widely used tools for data mining on graphs. Uh, actually, it is pretty simple, like uh, this structure, uh, a simple two-layer uh, extension of the simple. Uh, neural network. The only difference is, it, is that we uh, multiply uh, the, uh, the renormalized affinity matrix from the left in each layer. So yeah, it's just, so it is uh, on node level, it is equivalent to add a uh, um, aggregation step from the neighborhood set of each node. So it is a, it's a simple extension of the traditional neural network. Um, so the two limitations of, of that kind of structure uh, is the, the performance degradation of deep GCNs. That is, unlike the traditional convolutional network, when you stack uh, GCN uh, in, in that simple way to some deep uh, network, you will, instead of have a, a performance boost, you will find a performance drop and the performance will drop pretty quickly. Um, uh, the second problem is that uh, uh, the performance degradation of heterophilic graphs, that is, there exists some graphs that even shallow graph network will perform pretty bad, uh, even compared to traditional uh, shallow neural network. So I, I, I need to first introduce the concept of homophily and heterophily. A homophily is actually when uh, two connected nodes tend to share the similar features and labels. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have different metric uh, to measure the homophily level of a graph. Uh, for example, edge homophily or node homophily. They simply just measure uh, the proportion of edges or nodes that connected nodes uh, or edges from the same class. Uh, and the, gr the graph structure with low homophily value are called uh, heterophilic. And uh, people usually think that uh, in the massive passing on heterophilic graph, uh, since uh, connecting nodes uh, 
from different classes tend to uh, connect to each other. And after the aggregation step, uh, the node feature from different classes will, uh, will be mixed together. And uh, so that the nodes from different classes will become uh, indistinguishable. So this will harm the performance of uh, graph network. Uh, so I will int introduce these two limitations one by one. Um, the first one, the performance degradation of deep GCNs. There are actually um, different uh, angles to explain the performance degradation. For example, over smoothing, the loss of rank, uh, over squashing or information loss in the limit of infinite layers. And in this talk, I will uh, emphasize the second one, which is the loss of rank, which is my uh, research direction. Um, but actually, uh, <clears throat> in a graph network community, uh, we have different opinions over this kind of performance degradation. Uh, uh, some people just think that it is just a trainability issue. Uh, that is, um, by simply uh, improve uh, the uh, training strategy. For example, we, if we just uh, change the weight initialization strategy, or we just do some weight, uh, weight normalization or their normalization, we can successfully train uh, deep GCN. And uh, there, are, there are also some published paper in NURIS 2021 that theoretically show that um, the, the deep GCN actually uh, is more expressive than the shallow GCN. But still this, but I have to say the mainstream still think that the loss of ex, ex, uh, expressive power still exists. But for me, um, there is no conclusion for now to this problem. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, there is a theorem in, in our paper that is suppose we just stack the GCN in this simple way, uh, and suppose the uh, width matrix WJ is uh, non negative with this kind of uh, restriction, and if the graph has no bipartite components. Uh, the rank of the uh, output layer will be less or equal than k, where k is the number of connected components, e.g. Uh, that is, uh, when we stack uh, the, the deep GCN in this simple way, uh, uh, no matter how, uh, how deep we stack the layer, uh, the rank of the output will converge to uh, a less than uh, some kind of given value, which is which depends on the graph structure. And we, uh, we conduct some uh, numerical experiments. Uh, that is, uh, the, the, the uh, x-axis is the number of layer. Uh, the y-axis is the rank of the output. We can see that the, out, the rank of the output layer just uh, decrease if we have this kind of ReLU activation function. It will drop pretty quickly. Uh, so this confirmed that the loss of rank phenomena really exists in deep graph network. Uh, and also from this numerical test, we can find that uh, uh, although for most of the activation function, uh, the, the rank of the output will drop quickly, but for the blue one, the hyperbolic tangent one, the rank will be, will be kept uh, or almost be kept even for very deep uh, graph convolutional network. So, but do you have any particular reason for that? Why is that activation function performs differently from the other ones? Uh, yes, because uh, we, we give a theorem that uh, we show that um, after the uh, component wise uh, hyperbolic tangent uh, function of any uh, two uh, vectors independently draw from a continuous distribution, the rank will be uh, reserved uh, with probability one. So the hyperbolic tangent function actually has good property on preserving the rank of output. But actually a uh, random function, since, since we just truncate all the, uh, uh, the negative components, it is very probable that we can get two uh, dependent uh, vectors after the random rule. Like transformation, yes. Okay. Uh, so this um, 
So this inspires us to use a uh, different activation function in a uh, deep graph network. Um, another, an, another way to, um, to make uh, a deep graph network is to concatenate uh, multi-scale information in each hidden layer. So we design uh, two different architectures, which is the snowball one and the truncated crowd of one uh, to uh, concatenate the multi-scale information in each layer. Uh, the snowball one just uh, uh, concatenate all the uh, all the output of previous layer as the input of the next layer, uh, and the truncated crowd of just concatenate all the uh, uh, multi-scale information in each layer, and uh, we uh, we conduct the uh, numerical experiments again on these uh, the snowball and uh, truncated crowd of architecture. Uh, we can see that suppose we have a ReLU activation function that is the, the red line. So although we still have the uh, loss of rank, but the, the convergence of the rank is much slower in uh, snowball architecture and truncated crawler architecture, given we have the ReLU activation function. And uh, for the blue one, uh, the hyperbolic tangent function, uh, they are all good on the three different uh, architectures. And we also observe that even with identity uh, activation functions, that is, we, we have no uh, nonlinearity. Uh, the, gray, the, gray, uh, the gray curve is still a converge pretty slowly. So uh, we just uh, designed these three uh, different uh, deep deep graph network, which is linear snowball, that is under a uh, snowball architecture, but only has linear activation function, the snowball one and tropical crowd of uh, network. These two uh, has the uh, hyperbolic tangent function as the activation function. And under different uh, experimental settings, uh, we can still achieve, we, we, we can all uh, achieve the SOTA experiments. Uh, and the, the, the percentage is the, uh, the percent of uh, training nodes that are, that have labeled. Uh, so, yeah, questions? Yeah, so like, uh, it seems like the linear snowball is performing relatively good. Yes, yes. yes. So the no active function does not play an important role in that sense. Yes, that's right. Okay, so. But, yeah, but that is actually back to uh, 2019, we, we don't notice this problem, but actually it is because the, the graph for these three data sets are pretty good. That is, uh, these three data sets are actually uh, the homophilic data sets, which means uh, the nodes uh, from the same class uh, tends to uh, connect together. This, this provide uh, additional uh, useful information even without any nonlinearity. So this is pretty good. But for some other graphs, that is hydrophilic, uh, the graph network uh, cannot perform good. So no, no matter you have linear or nonlinear structure. But the hydrophilic problem only arise in like 2020. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So it's okay. So, Let's add to another limitation of graph network, which is the uh, uh, hydrophilic problem. Uh, the, uh, uh, we have two sub problems. Uh, the first one is the homophily metric that we use uh, has some shortcomings. That is, we only uh, measure the uh, graph label consistency. That is, uh, as I said, uh, the proportion of edges that uh, connect nodes from the same class uh, or from different classes. Um, but this failed to explain some low homophilic cases. For example, in this example, we have two bipartite graph. Uh, we can see that all the, all the nodes from class one connect to, to class two, and all the nodes from class two connect to class one. So this graph is actually pretty bad according to the, the existing homophily metric because uh, we have no, no edges that connect in those from the same class. And we have 
homophilic value is zero. So, which means the graph network should perform pretty bad on these graphs, but actually it's not. Because after one step of aggregation, uh, the nodes from different classes, we just change the value, but they are still distinguishable. So, uh, so this means we need some new metric uh, uh, to improve the, like, the prediction or the measurement over this kind of graph. Um, the, second, uh, the second problem is the, the bad performance of GNs on some graphs. Uh, that is, uh, for, the, for these nine graphs that uh, are usually used as the benchmark data sets uh, for heterophilic graph, we can see that the, the red one uh, are, the, are the graph data sets that, that the simple two layer MLP can outperform the uh, graph number of these lines. But for the, the green one are, the, are when the graph number of these lines can outperform uh, the, the two layer MLP. So it is, um, it is uh, we need to design some architecture that it can uh, consistently perform good on any kinds of uh, any kinds of graph uh, and any kinds of graph with uh, different uh, homophily level. Uh, so, so the for first for the first sub problem, which is for the homophily metric, uh, we def we first define the uh, node similarity matrix. Uh, S A hat uh, X, uh, which is the post aggregation of similarity. That is it. From this example, we can see that um, so even uh, even it is heterophilic, but after after uh, uh, aggregation, uh, the nodes are still distinguishable. And uh, from if you measure the similarity between the nodes, we can see that the nodes node one two three are pretty similar. And uh, node four, five, six are pretty similar. So based on this kind of similarity matrix, uh, especially after uh, the post uh, post aggregation node similarity matrix, uh, we can easily identify uh, which nodes are getting closer and which nodes are getting uh, more different after the aggregation step. And also, this similar this similarity matrix is the same as the gradient of the simplified graph network, which is a simplified version uh, of GCN without any non-linearity. And, and this also tells us that if two nodes shares uh, a large similarity value, which means in, uh, in the back propagation step, um, the two, the two nodes, these two nodes will tend to move to the same direction. If, if they have a smaller sim uh, similarity value, Maybe they won't move to the same direction. So, based on this uh, similarity uh, matrix, we can define a similarity score. That is, for, for the node, uh, the mean of the similarity value from the nodes uh, in the same class, uh, if, if it is larger than the mean of the, uh, the, the, the similarity value of the nodes from different classes we give a one to this node. Otherwise, we give a zero to this node. And we take average to see how many uh, nodes that uh, satisfy this condition. So this, this can give us the uh, uh, aggregation similarity score. And since, since based on the definition of homophily, it measures uh, the relation between the graph and the uh, labels. So, and to compare with the existing homophily metric, so we get the uh, aggregation homophily and its modified version like, like this one. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we also conduct some uh, uh, numerical tests uh, on some synthetic graphs uh, to, to see if this measure is good or not. Um, that is, we generate synthetic graphs of different homophily value. And we train the, the baseline uh, GN network on these graphs. And we just plot the, the performance over the uh, homophily metric. And a good metric should be like, the, the, uh, should, the, the curve on a good metric should be like a homophily, uh, a monotonic increasing 
uh, curve. But actually, we can see that for the three existing uh, metric, the edge homophily, node homophily, and class homophily, uh, we observe the U-shaped curve, which means uh, we cannot just uh, properly uh, describe how the graph structure will influence the, uh, the, the prediction of the uh, graph network. But for our, uh, our proposed metric, it is uh, approximately a uh, monotonic principle. So which means uh, this proposed metric is uh, more informative than the existing ones. And uh, also to address the, the performance degradation of heterophilic graph, um, it is imperative find that using uh, uh, the high pass filter, that is uh, I minus A hat, is empirically uh, helpful to, to address this problem. And through the lens of uh, the similarity matrix, we can find that in this example, um, we can find that uh, uh, it just, uh, the, the similarity matrix assigns just a positive value to the nodes in the same class and assign negative values to the nodes from different classes. So, from these two computed graphs, this is when we use the uh, when we use a hat as the aggregation operator, we can see that uh, node one and node three, that is these two nodes, they just they assign zero node one assign zero point five to the nodes from the same class, and also zero point five to the nodes from different classes, which means uh, node one will move to the direction as the same class and also the different classes, which is bad. Uh, and for node three, uh, node three assigns larger value to, to the nodes from different classes than the nodes from the same class, which is, which is worse than node one. So which means node three will move, uh, the, the feature of node three will move closer uh, to, uh, node, uh, from, to, the, to the blue ones instead of to the red ones. So which means if we use the aggregation step, uh, it is pretty bad for in the back propagation steps. But if we use a high pass filter, we can see that for node one and node three, node one assign positive values to the nodes from the same class and the negative values to the nodes from different classes. And it is same as like, same for node three, which means uh, in back propagation, uh, node one and node three uh, will move to the same direction uh, as the node from the same class and move to different uh, directions to, uh, to, from the node to the, from the different classes. So this explains why in some cases, uh, the, high, uh, the high pass filter will work better than the low pass filter. Uh, so based on that, that observation, um, we just define the, uh, uh, diversification distinguishability uh, based on this uh, similarity matrix. Uh, that is when uh, uh, when we have this similarity matrix, a uh, node V is diversification distinguishable if the two following conditions are satisfied. That is uh, when it assigns positive value uh, to the nodes, uh, the mean of the assigned similarity value to the nodes in the same class are positive, and the two different class to the nodes in different class, the mean is uh, negative. So we call V is diversification distinguishability, and uh, we also define the graph diversification distinguishability value. That is the the proportion of the nodes that is the diversification distinguishable, and we can prove that. Uh, for binary classification problem, if we have the feature matrix as Z uh, and the uh, aggregation operator as the random walk normalized affinity matrix, then all the nodes are diversification distinguishable. And this value is equal to one. This shows that uh, the diversification operation uh, really works for heterophilic problem. So uh, to, to really uh, solve this problem, 
uh, we propose to include the low pass channel. That is, we have the aggregation step, the high pass channel, and uh, the identity channel together in each layer instead of using the uni channel architecture, which which only has the aggregation step in each, in each layer. And also from the above example, we can see that different nodes may need information from different channels. For example, node one and the node three need information from high pass channel. And for other nodes, they need information from low pass channel. So, so based on this observation, we design a node-wise attention mechanism uh, to achieve this. Here, uh, here is some ablation tests. Uh, the GCN, the Snowball 2, Snowball 3 are, are uh, the baseline model, and their uh, prediction performance is in red. Uh, and after we put these three uh, baseline model into the ACM framework, we can see uh, a a significant performance boost, uh, which is in uh, green and in blue. Uh, and also here is a, a viralization uh, of different channels. Uh, here, it, this is the input, the viralization of the input features. And after training in GCN, which only have one channel, the output has no clear pattern. But after we put it in the ACM GCN, uh, we can see that in, these are the, the realization of the three channels. We can see different channels has different patterns. And here is the, uh, the aggregation, uh, aggregation weight or the, the output of the uh, attention mechanism. And here is the, uh, uh, after we add all the, all the output of the three uh, layers, we can have a clear pattern in our output. Uh, and also here we have a recently updated version of the ECM, which is ECM GCM plus that is adding a <coughs> structure information channel in each layer and uh, ECM GCM plus plus that is we have a structure information channel in each layer and we have a residual connection uh, and here is some uh, some comparison with SOTA model, and we can see that ACM GCM plus plus can perform uh, the best overall the uh, hydrophilic benchmark data sets. Okay, that's it.